What's up guys, we're going to be using SQL injection to gain access to the admin account. This is actually one of the challenges on Juice Shop, log in with the administrator's user account. So far we know that the form is vulnerable to SQL injection. If we submit the payload of a single quote into the email field, we get a 500 response which actually reveals the explicit SQL statement that's being used to extract information from the database. Select all from users where email equals and we can see the injected single quote. Now in this case I'm going to give you the payload up front then we're going to discuss how it works. The payload in this case is a single quote or one equals one semicolon then two horizontal dashes. In order to use a login form, we need to bypass the JavaScript verification. So we can enter anything into the password field just so it's not blank. Click the login button. And all of a sudden, we find ourselves inside the admin account. So what just happened there? Let's take a look at the SQL query that would have been run assuming that our code was injected into the query itself. So the query itself is going to look something like this before modification. Select all, that asterisk means all in SQL, from users table where email equals, and it's at this point that the injection attack would have occurred. So let's rewrite this taking into account the SQL that would have been injected at that point in the statement. Select all from users where email equals. And what was our payload? Because it's here that it will be injected. First of all, we start with a single quote. Now that means that the email string has been closed and anything else that's injected at this stage onwards is pure SQL. So we had or one equals one, followed by a semicolon and two dashes. So we're asking the SQL query to find the first entry in the table where the email of that entry matches the string. Now in this case, that's not going to match anything because presumably there aren't any entries in the database where there's a blank email if we assume that that field is going to be required. But it doesn't have to match that. It can also match the second half of the statement, or one equals one. So when SQL pulls out the first row of the database, it first checks the email field. Does this email match an empty string? No, it doesn't. Does one equal one? That's always going to be a match, regardless of the data that's present. So what happens? The first row is selected because the second half of that conditional statement always ends up being true for the first row in the database. Now returning to the original SQL statement, we see that it doesn't technically end there. If the email is correct, but the password hash does not match with the password hash in the database, then nothing is going to be returned from that SQL statement the user's not going to be logged in in this case. So what happens to the second half of that statement after our SQL injection attack? Well, here is where the final characters of our injection come into play. Firstly, we have a semicolon. This is an important character in SQL because it defines the end of a statement. What we would actually end up having here if we didn't have these two lines and password equals and it would continue that way until the end of the line. But this wouldn't return anything useful from the database because what we essentially have is the end of one SQL query and then the beginning of another, or we should say the end of another that starts midway through. This is actually just going to provoke an error. It's not meaningful SQL. This is where our two horizontal dashes come in. These designate a comment in SQL. In other words, everything in the rest of this statement is just completely ignored. We have the end of the statement, we then have the comment characters, and anything from here until the end of the SQL query is completely ignored by the SQL database. What does that mean in practice? It means we've just bypassed all of this password verification. 
The database never even checks to see if the password matches with the password hash stored in the database. We instantly get access to the first row data, which in this case is the admin account. You may have wondered why we specifically got access to the admin account since we didn't provide any kind of user email when attempting to log in using SQL injection. Well, in this case, it's very simply that it's the first row in the database. And it makes sense in many user databases, the first account that's going to be created is that account that's created by the developer. It's going to be some kind of admin account. Let's log out and let's use a different email to see if we can access a different user's account. This is actually another of the juice shop challenges. You can see login Bender, log in with Bender's user account. Now in this case, the email address has deliberately been left in a place on the page, which is quite easy to access. So I've headed to the about us section and we can see here that on this part of the page, there are places where feedback has actually been left by various users. So if we just scroll through here, we can see most are anonymous, but we can see this one here, bender at juice shop. In fact, part of the email has been blanked out, but it's enough for us to be able to guess at what the likely email is in this case. Now, this is just an illustration. You're not necessarily going to be able to find out a user's email by visiting the about us section on a page. But the point is we find all types of email addresses leaked in different places over the web. And these can potentially be used as part of a login attack, especially if it is found on the site, because if you find an email used on a specific site by one of the members of that site, there's also a chance that that email is actually going to be used as part of their login credentials. It's certainly not beyond the realms of possibility. So let's head back to the login and we know the email now. It's going to be bender at juice hyphen sh dot op. Now in this case, we're going to exclude the all one equals one because we don't want the first row, the admin account to match the SQL query. So what we'll do in this case is we will simply terminate the SQL query early. So bender at juice shop, end the SQL statement, pass in a common character. We've now bypassed the rest of the SQL query, which we know includes the password check in this case. Let's click the login button. And here we go. We check out the account. We can see we are now in bender at juice shops account. Now, keep in mind, you should only try these techniques on assets that you own or assets that you've been given explicit permission to test. Anything else is illegal and you could end up in jail. Thanks for watching, guys.